All right, bless Sabbath, everyone. Sabbath. Sabbath. Most high in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in Nazareth. Bless us all. All praises. Let's go to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18. We're going to read verse 37. First Kings chapter 18, verse 37. So, 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 37. So, this is a, the, a prayer of Elijah the prophet to the Father. So, it says, Hear me, O Lord. Hear me. See? So, Elijah's praying to the Most High that the Father hear him in his prayer. Hear me, O Lord, hear me. That this people, meaning the people of the children of Israel, his people, the Most High's people, Elijah's people, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God. See, so Elijah's prayer to the Father for Israel is, that they might be saved, that they might know that the Most High, that you are their God, that you're the true God, that you're their true God, and that thou, see, and that thou, the Most High, has turned their heart back again. So for Israel's hearts to be turned back to the Most High, where was their heart? Oh, oh what? With the other nation. Their heart was a, 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 a away from the Most High. Their heart was a turned from the Most High. Right, by following the gods of that, that Ahab at this time, through the counsel of his wicked wife Jezebel, set up in the land. So Israel was in a state where they were double-minded. And in, in, in actuality, double-mindedness is friendship with the world. So who is going to turn Israel's heart to the Most High, the Most High himself? But Elijah know at this point that he's what? At this time, he's a vessel in the hand of God. So the Most High is going to turn his heart to Israel to worship him through Elijah. And the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So Elijah is dealing with the people of Israel, the people of Israel that's in a state of being double-minded. They got one foot in the world, one, ser one foot serving God. And according to that way of worshiping God, that's being double-minded. And what does the scriptures tell us about a, a double-minded man? 
What does the scriptures teach us about a double-minded man? They're not stable. There you go. James 1 and 8. A double-minded man is what? Unstable in all his ways. So in that instability, we're going to be given in to, the, to, to, to our lusts. Because when we, we can't worship God and the devil. We can't be lukewarm. We either got to be hot or cold. Our light's supposed to be burning. But if we're lukewarm, Christ said he'll spew us out of his mouth. That's in Revelation. So Christ said no man can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one, right? Love one or despise and hate the other. <laughs> So we can't love the world, meaning fulfilling our, 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 you know, fulfilling lusts that lead to sin and serve the Most High. So let's go to the book of James chapter 5. Just hold that, right? Let's go to James chapter 5. So Elijah is praying to the Father. That Israel's heart be turned to the Most High, like Christ on when he was getting to you know on the day he was going to be crucified. He said he prayed to the Father that 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 they may know him. See, that they may know him. Christ and Elijah wanted Israel to know the Most High. John seventeen and five. Let's get that point real quick, then we'll go to James. John 17 and 5. So the Most High is the one that's turning Israel back to serve him. That's what we have to understand. If man thinks that he's doing something, then, you know, that yeah, he's his own God. <laughs> he's... he's the God that that man worships is himself. So this is John 17 and 5. I'm sorry, John 17 and... I'll read from the first verse. These words spake Jesus. So in, in 1 Kings 18, we... Oh, what was it, 21? Uh, no, 37. We were reading Elijah was praying to the Father. Now the Lord's praying to the Father, right? These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to where heaven and said what? Father. So just like Elijah was praying to the father during the time of Ahab, king of the, the kingdom of Israel, Israel and double mindedness. See, Christ on the on the day that he's going to be crucified and killed. Understand what we're reading here, this lengthy prayer in John 17, you know, pretty much. The whole chapter is the prayer of Christ to the Father. I said, I'll wait for everybody to get it. John 17. John chapter 17. So John 17 is... John. The book of John is right before the book of Acts. So I'll read it from the top again. John chapter 17 and verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to where? Heaven. So he didn't face Jerusalem. He didn't face the east. He faced towards what? The Father in heaven. Okay, so these doctrines in Israel where you got to face the east, face Jerusalem, we to follow Christ. When we did face Jerusalem, when we had a temple, that was for its time and place. But ultimately, even under that way of, you know, that we faced Jerusalem, it was always understood that one greater than the temple was going to be among us. And our way to worship the Father would be through, through, through that one that would be greater than the temple. And that's Christ. So it says, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to where? Heaven. Because that's where God's throne is. In the heaven of heavens. And said, what did he say? What's the next word? So he called him what? Heavenly Father, Father. Yeah. So we call on the name of the Lord God. We can say Father just like Christ did. Yeah. We ain't got to get, well, what's the most high, the Father's name in Hebrew? And then we try to get the pronunciation and we missing the point. 
praying in the Father's name is, you know, praying to the Most High under the power that he is, the authority that he is. He's the Most High Lord God. So he said, Father, the hour is what? Come. See, say that. Time, the hour of our Lord's sufferings, his betrayal, his sufferings, his crucifixion, his death was at hand. The hour has finally come. This is the end of the Lord's earthly ministry. Glorify thy son. Glorify me. He knew he was going to die on this day. Glorify me. That thy son also may glorify thee. So how would how would the father glorify the son, Jesus? By on that cross, dying faithfully to the most high. He that knew no sin, becoming sin for us, that we would be made the righteousness of God in him. So our Lord died a glorious death. And three days and three nights after his burial, he was risen from the dead. And he was glorified through his resurrection from the dead. See, so he's praying that the father would glorify him so that by Christ being glorified, he would continue to glorify the most high. And Christ did glorify, can continue to glorify the father after his resurrection from the dead. And then when he entered into his glory to sit on the right hand of God, he continued to glorify God. In the form of the what? The comforter on earth. Working through men. Just like the Holy Spirit. We're going to read in 1 Kings 18. Working through men. Working through Elijah. So then it says. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. See. So, so the Lord was given power of God. Over all flesh. That's why he was able to what? Heal the sick. People that were blind, he restored sight to them. Uh, people that were withered, um, you know, crippled. Um, brothers and sisters, children that were sick, had ailments, different type of infirmities. Some of these infirmities, you know, almost their whole life. They were born that way or 12 years of their life. The Lord was given power over all flesh. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given them. See, so not only did Christ come to heal our people and teach our people the word he gave, he, he came to give us eternal life. Then it says, and this is life eternal, that they, the same people Elijah was praying to in 1 Kings 18, 27, Israel, that they might know thee. See, what was Elijah's prayer to the Father? We, we read it in 1 Kings 18. Hear me, O Lord, hear me. That this people may know that thou art the Lord God. And that's what we read in 1 Kings 18, 37. So Elijah's prayer to the Father for Israel was that they, they might be saved from this double-mindedness, halting between two opinions. See? And know that Elijah wanted Israel to know that you're the true and living God. Not Baal, you're the true and living, you're the true and living God. So Christ on the cross, what's he praying for? As this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, see. So the Lord wanted Israel to know who is the true God. See? Just like Elijah. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life unto as many as thou hast given him. Verse 2, John 17, 3. And this is life eternal. This is how we obtain eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God. So the only way to eternal life is by knowing God. And knowing that he's the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast what? Sent. Because the way, the only way to know God is through his son that he sent on the earth. So now let's go to uh, James. Because 
We're going to read where the Most High answered Elijah's prayer and our Lord's prayer. Because the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So let's go to the book of James. James chapter 5. James chapter 5, verse 17. I'll read from the 16th verse. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be what? Healed. See? So, you know, if we sin against one another, we should what? Confess our faults one to another. And we're to what? Always pray for one another. Because that, that's loving your brothers yourself. Always being mindful. The ailments, sufferings, and, you know, um, not just praying for brothers and sisters' ailments and sicknesses, but just praying for whatever blessings they, they, they need in their, in their life. Praying, praying for brothers and sisters, right? Then it says that you may be what? Healed. Healed from our infirmities and ailments and things of that nature. Then it says the effectual fervent, see, undying, see, prayer of a righteous man availeth what much. So in 1 Kings 18, 37, Elijah was praying fervently to the Father. And Elijah was a righteous man and that prayer availed. In John 17, on the day that our Lord was going to be crucified and killed, that was a, that was a, fervent prayer that the Lord was praying to the Father. And the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So what 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 was righteous about Elijah and, and our Lord Jesus Christ? That they had faith in the Most High. That they were faithful to the Most High and they were obedient. See? And they knew that they couldn't do it without the Most High. Whatever it was, <laughs> Elijah couldn't do anything without the Most High, neither could the Lord do anything without the Most High. Even when he uh, raised Lazarus from the dead, it tells us that he prayed to the Father so that the people would know that when Lazarus come out of that grave that he prayed to the Father. See, the Lord gave him power over all flesh, even the dead, to be risen. So now let's read the next verse. Elijah, it says Elias it's, it's talking about Elijah is just the way it was translated. Elijah was a man subject to passions as we are. See, so Elijah was just like you and I. You know, we we're, have our, you know, our shortcomings, faults. We're in the flesh, but we still try to what? Be in the spirit, serve the most high, endure all things, see? And he prayed what? Earnestly. See? So Elijah was a man that prayed earnestly, right? Then it says, And he, uh, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not what? Rain. See? So... Uh, there was a, Israel had committed idolatry against the Most High, so the Most High is going to bring a, a famine upon the land of, of, of where it, it, it wouldn't rain for three years. And Elijah prayed, and it came to pass. You know, for the Father's will to be done. Then it says, "And it rained not on earth by the space of three years and six months." See. So I see how powerful Elijah's prayer was. In that prayer, whose desire and will was he seeking? The Father's. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. See? So, that was powerful. A man praying to the Father. And it don't rain for three years, six months. And then he prays again after, those, after that time. And then the heavens open and, and it rains on the earth. Well, that's because he was special. What is saying? He was a man subject to passions as we are. So if Elijah, if the Most High heard Elijah's prayer, he could hear our prayers. You understand me? Well, that was Elijah. Yeah. 
What was, was Elijah different than us, you and me? It just said he's a man of what? Light passions. See? But he was always about, when it was prayer, it was the will of the Father. The Most High working through him, the Lord putting in his mind what to do, and then he's praying, Most High working with him. So it says, and he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her what? Fruit. See, it rained, and the land wasn't barren and desolate no more, and the land brought her fruit. So let's go back to 1 Kings 18. So we read that. I'm going to read the 37 verse one more time. 1 Kings 18, 37. It says, hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. See, so Elijah's prayer to the father was, Father, hear me, hear me. See? That this people Israel will know that thou art the Lord God. See, let them know that you're the true and living God because at this time, they were halting between two opinions. They were being double-minded. They were being lukewarm. They were trying to serve two masters. Right? So let's see. Let, we're going to read what happens eventually, but now we're going to go back to the first verse. <clears throat> first Kings 18. Now remember also, we were reading a few weeks ago, who, who was the prophet that the Most High raised up onto Israel that would come in the spirit of uh, uh, and power of Elijah. Who was that prophet? Who was the prophet that would come in the spirit and power of Elijah to fulfill the prophecy in Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6? John. Malachi 3 and 1. John the Baptist, right? John the Baptist. Remember, it told us that John the Most High would raise up the son of Zechariah. John, what did, what did it tell us about the ministry of John? That he would come in the spirit and power of Elijah, right? And then what did it say? Set the path for the one to come. Set the path for the one to come, the Messiah to come. What else did it say? What did we just read in 1 Kings 18, 37? Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. What else, what else did the angel... Gabriel tell Zechariah, the Levite brother, concerning his son John. So everything you said is correct. There's something else, a couple more things he said. That he would teach the people the way of God. That he, he would teach the people the way of God, right. And by doing so, he would turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. See, that's 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 the point that uh we trying to emphasize, right? Go just hold this, right? First Kings 18, 37. Go to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And verse 16. I'll read from 13. For Luke 1, 13. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. See? The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, what? Availeth much. Undying. Remaining faithful. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee, what? A son. And they were both an older age. And thou shalt call his name what? John. So that's, remember when I asked the question, the great, who is the prophet that the Most High will raise up that will come in the spirit and power of Elijah? The brother said what? John. So that's correct according to this verse. See? So that's, we got to search the scriptures, right? Search the, we got to go to the scriptures. Christ taught out the scriptures. Peter taught out the scriptures. All the apostles of the Lord taught out the scriptures. 
you had um what was their name um uh, 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 the brother and the husband and wife they taught uh Paulus I forgot their names um uh, the book of Acts um they taught the scriptures what's that Acts 19 or the 18th chapter uh what was that name What was that, brother? The Borries, the Borrero? Aquila and Priscilla. Mm hmm. Apollos. Yeah, they taught Apollos. Yeah, 18, 24. Yeah, yeah. let's just get there real quick. All right. Acts 18, 24. The sisters, you know, they had their part in the ministry of the Lord too. Not a serpent authority over men like you got in these churches. Yes, women talking about, I'm, I'm a deaconess of the church. You know, I'm the pastor of the church. I'm the bishop. It's out of order. First, uh, this is Acts 18.24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, see, Apollos, that's not even a Hebrew name. <laughs> Apollos, born at Alexandria, see, but he was an Israelite, born in Alexandria, which I believe is, was in Egypt, Alexandria, Egypt. <coughs> so you had Israelites that were born in Egypt, lived in Egypt, an eloquent man. And mighty in the what? Scriptures. So when it came to the law of Moses and the books of the prophets and the Psalms, brother was mighty, powerful in them scriptures, man. And he was very what? Eloquent. He could speak very well, eloquently, right? Came to where? Ephesus. This man was instructed in the what? Way of the Lord. And being fervent in the what? Spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. So there's only a certain level that he knew. He knew about the baptism of John, so he could only speak according to the measure of grace the Lord gave him to, to know of the scriptures, right? And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they already believers in Christ, they took him unto them. And expounded unto him the way of God more what? Perfectly. So who is he missing? Christ. Because that's the only way we're perfect in Christ. So he knew a lot in the scriptures, right? He knew about the prophecies. And he knew a little according to what John taught, right? The Lamb of God that was to take away the sin. But he didn't know much more than what John preached. Concerning Christ. So Priscilla and Aquila, husband and wife, they already have that knowledge. So then they dealt with him, right? And they expounded on to him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass him to Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly. See? Showing by the scriptures that Jesus was what? Christ. So where did he learn that from? Priscilla and Aquila. That Jesus was the Christ of Israel. Jesus of Nazareth. Okay. So the, uh, you know, that was the most high working through them. That This brother uh, 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 Aquila and, and Priscilla. To work through them. And then the knowledge of. Uh, Apollos of the scriptures and faith in God was increased and then he, he started teaching and it, it said mightily convinced the Jews like they were like like Peter in Acts 2 he like Peter mightily convinced Israel that Jesus was what and and that publicly right this was not done you know somewhere in secret this was publicly shown by the scriptures see let's go let's go to Psalm let's go to Psalm 16 Psalm 110 let's go to the covenant the most high made with David that of the fruit of his loins, he would raise up Christ. Who is that Christ? Jesus of Nazareth. Boom. And then like, 
he convinced them mightily. Like they couldn't, they ain't say no resist the wisdom that he spoke. So um, let's go back to uh, Luke, right? Luke chapter one. And verse 14. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at what? At his birth. So all his friends and family would rejoice at his birth because they would be blessed with a child in their old age. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. See, that's another reason. He would be what? Great in the sight of the Lord. You got some Israelites, believe it or not. Yeah, they got friends, blue border, talking about Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai, right? And they're talking about John the Baptist lost the faith. They tried this, John the Baptist, and speak in a negative way to, about the brother. When the Most High said he would be great in the Lord's sight and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's what? Womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he what? Turn to the Lord their God. Just like who was praying for Elijah. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Now one thing we know about John the Baptist, he prayed and fasted a lot. And he taught his disciples to pray and fast. So. You know John wasn't going to turn many of the children of Israel unto God without what? The prayer of faith. See? Because John was about converting sinners to God, not to him. He wasn't trying to set up a camp. Because I, I, I would like to know what was the name of John the Baptist's camp. What was the name of them? Did they have, what, what was the ABC name? Where do you read about camps in Israel? In the, in the sense where Israel come from. All different doctrines. See? All that's dealing when you really figure it out. It's the idolatrous worship of corrupt men. John the Baptist didn't set up no camp. He wasn't trying to convert sinners to be his followers. He said, I must decrease and the Lamb of God, Jesus of Nazareth, he must increase. See, he wasn't about, you know, gathering people under his name so that he can glorify him. That's, that, that's what you see in a lot of these so-called bishops and elders and deacons and reverends and pastors, and whether they're Christian or Israelite religions. John the Baptist wasn't about that. He was about converting sinners unto God. Elijah wasn't trying. What was the name of Elijah's camp? Elijah didn't have a camp. He was about converting, converting sinners unto God by the power of God. Not he's deep, right? I'm deep. I know the scriptures. I'm eloquent or whatever, right? Man, even Apollos didn't think, well, it was his eloquence. What, what, how did he mightily convince the circumcision of Israel that Jesus was the Christ of Israel? Through the scriptures. And, and how did he learn them scriptures? The Most High and Christ taught in them scriptures. And the Most High, what helped them along that path was who? Priscilla and Aquila. See? And what, what was their name of their camp? You know, all right, you join us. Let's start on. They didn't do that. There's one body. That's it. There's one church. That's it. <laughs> so stay away from these Israelite doctrines. But you got to join the camp to be in the truth. The Lord is adding to the church daily such as should be saved. There's only one church, and guess what? It ain't got no name. That's why when people, what's the name of your camp? It ain't no camp. We are the 12 tribes of Israel under Christ. And that's not to say that's a camp name. I'll go to Acts 2.47. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Who is that church? The gathering of Israel. And I'm not saying gathering of Israel is the name of the church. <laughs> The church is the followers of Christ. Didn't start in 1970, Harlem, or 1969, 125th Street. Started in Acts. Not that there weren't other members to that church beforehand, 
Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and you know, the prophets, brothers, sisters that believe and died in the faith of Christ. But when they say, upon this rock, I will build my church by Peter's preaching and the apostles preaching that Jesus is the Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth is the Christ of Israel, the Lord will build his church. That's Israel repenting. So it says, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their what? God, just like Elijah prayed for, right? What was his prayer? First Kings 18, 37. Just hold that right there, that 16 verse. Go back to First Kings 18, 37. <clears throat> what is Elijah praying? Hear me, O Lord, hear me. You know John was doing this too. If he was in this, if John came in the spirit and power of Elijah, and Elijah was about prayer, what do you think John's about? Remember, look, they, 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 you had people that came to the Lord and his disciples complaining. John, man, he preached praying and fasting all the time. How come your disciples don't fast? He said, "Cause I'm here with them. They ain't got to fast. But when I'm not with them, then they gonna fast." <laughs> See, but they're bringing out that. John and his, they prayed and fasted. Now Christ prayed, and, you know, and fasted. But his disciples did they, they weren't praying all like that. Why? Because he was there among them. But once he would depart, then they would pray. So, hear me, O Lord, hear me. That this people, meaning Israel, and their double mindedness may know that thou art the Lord their God, that thou art the Lord God. And that thou hast turned their heart, what? Their mind back again to worship you. Because they were being double-minded. So hold this and read Luke 1, 14. I'm sorry, Luke 1, 16. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. By what? Prayer and faith obedience unto God. And it's when it, and when they say many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, meaning through God, not a side of God, not that any you know, we know. But we have to say points like that because Israel think that they're the ones that's waking up Israel. Brother, what are you doing? We waking up Israel. What are you doing? See, we waking up Israel. Many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Meaning many of the children of Israel would John the Baptist turn to the Lord their God by the power of God. See? And he, meaning John, verse 17 now, Luke 117, shall go before him, meaning God. John will go before God in the spirit and power of who? Elijah. So, what does it mean by in the spirit and power of Elijah? Is that reincarnation, bro? <laughs> you got Israelites, that's reincarnation. Or they won't call it reincarnation because they they don't want to say that word, so they'll say regeneration. But they're coming with the doctrine of reincarnation. Okay, because re regeneration, you read that two times in the scriptures. Matthew 19, 28, in the, in the book of uh, Titus. And Titus is going to talk about how the regeneration is going into how we're born again through the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 19, 28, when it mentions the regeneration, it's talking about when the Lord restores again the kingdom to Israel and the, the 12 disciples are sitting upon 12 thrones as judges in Israel when Christ sits upon the throne of his glory in the kingdom. So in order for all that to happen, there has to be a resurrection that takes place in order for for the 12 disciples of the Lord to be sitting on 12 thrones as Christ sits on his glory, that would have to mean that they would be risen from the dead at that time. And in order for them to be risen from the dead to sit upon 12 thrones, there, before that, there has to be a second appearing of our Lord for them to be risen from the dead. So if Christ ain't came back yet, how is the 12 disciples among us now? Because that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's where they're coming from. When I said them, these Israelites that teach the doctrine of reincarnation. Okay. I remember one time sitting in the 
to school on 125th Street in Harlem, and they, they taught that the 12 disciples are back on the earth today. That's not hearsay. I was in them classrooms, so no one can say, oh, you wasn't there. You, nah, I was there. <laughs> See? So that was a doctrine that was taught, and they would go to Matthew 19, 28, take that scripture out of context so we would be looking at the elders and leaders of the church. That's them. They were with Jesus Christ. They came back on the earth. Their word is bond. What a destructive doctrine that was, man. See? Because time told a story of how corrupt man is. That's why we have to read scriptures in context. Because if you don't, we're going we, we, we're gonna, we're gonna to be, yeah, we, we may have escaped Esau's, the, the Caesar Borgia, you know, false Christianity of this world, and we're following false Christ in, in what we think is the truth. That's why this apostle's doctrine, that's, this is a blessing for us to learn it, man. It truly is, because it, it's the only way to discern what's right from what's wrong, what's good, and what's, from what's evil, from what's truth, and what's, what's false. The apostles, the doctrine of the apostles that Christ gave them that was given to Christ of the Father. That's the only truth on earth. That's the, that's the only doctrine that's right. And it was already laid out for us. It's not something that we had to invent 1969, 1970, you know, 2011. Or, it was already, the foundation hath already been laid. We're going to get that in Ephesians in time. There is no other foundation than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. That's what Paul said over 2,000 years ago. So how Israelite groups go, yeah, the truth started in 1969, 125th Street, Harlem. Then you got the splinter groups from that group talking about they're the ones that got the truth. Nobody else got the truth, directly or indirectly saying that. We have to stop. We have to repent from following corrupt men that's going to lead us to hellfire. It don't matter if the dude got fringes and blue border and armbands and studs coming up. Uh, does that mean he got the, oh, oh, he got the truth. Uh, what does that mean? He got a staff in his hand. Come on. Quoting scriptures right and left. Satan quotes scriptures. So what does it mean by, and many of the children of it, when they say, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. That ain't talking about reincarnation. That ain't talking about John the Baptist was Elijah reincarnated. That's not what that means. So what does it mean? Likeness. likeness. There will be a likeness or similarity between John and uh, Elijah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Anything you want to add <clears throat> to that, brother? Yeah, well, like Elijah's uh, the way he prayed, the stuff that Elijah did, did back then, as we read, he will do the same. Similar ministries is your point? Like yes. like their ministry, their way of, of... Yes, sir. Yeah, is that what you're talking about? Okay. Yeah. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but no, just no, to yeah. add to that, like their yeah, ministry, yeah. like the way they went about doing the will of the Father, there's similarities that we could draw between the life, right? Are we just, are we just read turning the children of Israel back to the Lord? Right. Okay. So the ministry, yeah, that he said. Yeah. Many of the, so when it says, and he shall go before him, meaning John would go before God, right? In the spirit and power of Elijah. The, so what does it mean by spirit and power of Elijah? What does it mean John would go before God in the spirit and power of Elijah? I got, you got some Israelites teaching that John the Baptist was Elijah reincarnated, so we know that ain't talking about this. I mean, there's a ton of scriptures to do, deal directly with that, but what we can go to is an example of the in the scriptures already written to give us an understanding to what we're reading here. And if we can draw a reincarnation from that, then you can draw a reincarnation from this. So what example in the scriptures do we have already written where the Most High did something very similar to what 
God was going to do, the Lord God was going to do with Elijah and uh, uh, John the Baptist. He shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. The likeness and the authority given unto him via Look, prophecy, via the Most High. Via the Most High, right, 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 to... right. So what you're saying is right, but what, what I'm asking is this. The Most High gave us an example already where what, what the Lord was going to do with, with John, he already did with a prophet in the past. Moses. Moses. Moses? Um. No. All right. So, would the word emphasis be emphasis? What's that, brother? Emphasis. Emphasis. Yeah. So, like you say, the same emphasis. Yeah. Right. So, right. So, we agree on that on those points, right? What I'm saying is, or asking is, what example in the scriptures do we have where another prophet went before God in the spirit and power of Elijah? From the prophets from the past? One of the prophets of the past. Um, Isaiah was one of them, right? Isaiah, Jeremiah. So Isaiah and Jeremiah went before God in the spirit of power of Elijah? Mm -hmm. Jeremiah? First of all, all right, let, let, let's bring out this point. The spirit of power of Elijah, what does that really mean? The spirit and power of Elijah. What does that mean? I like to think it means anointing. The, like the anointing, right? Prophetic anointing. That Prophetic means. anointing, right? Who gave? In other words, when he speaks, he's gonna have. He's gonna have that influence of the Most High to reach people. You said a key word: influence of who? The Most High. Right. So. The spirit and power of Elijah is truly what? So, what is this? The power? You, 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 you're not wrong. You, 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 you're like right there, close. Under, like under the power and authority of the Most High Christ, give to Elijah is given also the same way to John the Baptist. Right. So, so then, so the, the, the spirit and power of Elijah is truly the spirit and power of who? So the spirit that the Most High put up the most the spirit, his spirit that he put on Elijah, okay, because whose spirit was Elijah rolling in to do these works, to pray and this it, it don't uh, it, a famine comes on the earth for three month three years six months and then pray and then the rains come. The, whose spirit is he rolling in? His own spirit? Man got a spirit to, to have his own spirit to stop the rain and you know bring the rain again? Who? Only by whose spirit can a man do that? The spirit of God, right? So the spirit and power of Elijah is the spirit and power of God that the Most High put upon Elijah. He gonna put it on who now? John the Baptist, right? So, so and, and there's a scripture, a, a, a Bad scripture, man. We we gonna get it in in the, in the law, right? But before we get that point, to back up what was just said, now I'm asking the question: What what example do we have where the Most High, the Spirit of God that was upon Elijah, the Most High put upon another prophet? That's what I'm asking. Now, Lewin, we went over this at the street teacher not too long ago. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to throw it off, but I just got a question. Yes, sir. When we're talking about spirit and power, with the spirit, does the spirit have to be capital S to be emphasizing the... Not necessarily, because it's talking about the spirit. It's, it, you know, in some context, you know, you, you S will, the spirit it will say capital S. And that would mean Christ. It depends on the context of the scripture, okay. you know. So, but to back up the point, we got a scripture to back that up okay. in a moment. But I, so let's go to the, uh, so, all right, uh, one more time. Uh, I'll give a clue. When the Most High saw, when the people, you had certain people of Israel that saw 
the spirit of, of uh, Elijah was upon this prophet, they said it. The spirit of Elijah does rest on this man's spirit. <laughs> all right. After the day, we all going to know. All right? For sure. Go to first, uh, uh, Second Kings. The book of Second. So whole, whole first Kings, go to Second Kings. Second Kings, the book of Second Kings. So this is later on towards the end of the ministry of Elijah. Second Kings chapter 2. That's, I'm going to read from the first verse, 2 Kings 2 and 1. That's all right. Now you know. I'm sure I'm sure that one ain't going to slip by you again, brother. Go over. <laughs> 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. Hey, sometimes you like. Yeah. 2 Kings 2 and 1. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. So now we're reading about the end of the ministry of Elijah, right? He would be called up into heaven. And in doing so, he, he wouldn't die like, like, like most people. You know, you died and buried in the earth. Elijah, was he would be taken up into heaven by a whirlwind. I mean, a whirlwind of, of chariots, fiery, ho uh, fiery horses and a fiery chariot. So who was with him? Elisha, right? His brother in the Lord. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. So Elijah telling Elisha, Stay here, go gal, because the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. So Elijah said, uh, 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 uh. You ain't going nowhere without me. Because Elisha know that Moshe got Elijah going on a mission here. Next thing you know, where the, I mean, Elijah, Moshe sent Elijah on a mission. Next thing you know, Elijah, where'd he go? Moshe got Elijah going here, going there. Just very similar to uh, who was the brother? Philip. <laughs> when, remember, after he baptized the eunuch, the, from, the Israelite from Ethiopia, and he, man, Moshe moved him to the next place where he going to be. See? So Elisha's like, nah, you ain't leaving my sight, man. <laughs> as long as the Lord lives as you live, I'm, we going together. Verse 3. And the sons of the prophets, see, meaning men that, that, that followed the law of God, that were Bethel, came forth to Elisha and said unto him, knowest, so this is what they said to Elisha, and said unto him, knowest thou not that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, yeah, I know. Hold you your peace. <laughs> See? And Elijah said unto him, um, and Elijah said unto him, meaning Elisha, Elisha, tarry here, and I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. See, now the Lord got him going to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. So Elisha like, no, 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 you ain't going to leave my presence. You ain't going to leave me. You ain't going nowhere without me. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yeah, I know it. Hold ye your peace. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to where? Jordan. See? The Jordan River. And he said, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. So let's you get, he's like, look, you're not going nowhere without me. Verse 7. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. So now you have 50 men of the sons of the prophets. They went and they stood and viewed afar off. And who are they seeing afar off? 
Elijah and Elisha, right? Verse 7. And 50 men. Oh, we already read that, right? Verse 7. And they too went and stood. Uh, let me read the same verse again. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they too stood by where? Jordan. So Elijah and Elisha standing by the Jordan. Okay. Anybody follow so far what's happening here? Let's read the next verse. And Elijah took his mantle. See? Like his like, like outer garment, right? His mantle. And wrapped it together. So he wrapped his, you know, like he wrapped his mantle together, right? And what did he do? Smote the waters. Jordan's of where? The waters of where? What location? Jordan. Jordan River, right? The same place where later on in the history of Israel, John would come in the spirit and power of Elijah to what? Baptize the Christ, Elijah's Lord, our Lord. And smote the waters, and they divided hither and what? Thither. So that they too went over on what? Dry ground. So Elijah took his mantle, wrapped it, right? Smoked the water. <laughs> you know, he was praying, right? And then what happened? They were able to walk on dry ground. It, 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 like there was water on each side, right? And it came to pass when they were gone over on dry land, brother, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee. Ask what I shall do for thee. Before I be taken away before thee. Because remember in the first verse we were reading how Elijah would be taken in, 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 uh, by a whirlwind into heaven. So before he depart, what is he asking Elisha? Let's read it again. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Before I be taken away from thee. I'm sorry, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of what? Thy spirit be upon me. So now we're getting the answer to the question. Remember the question was, what other prophet did the Most High put the spirit that was upon Elijah on another prophet, which is the spirit of God? Let's be clear. <laughs> Well, let's see if it happened. So what is Elisha praying? What, I mean, what is he asking, urging? Um, or pray, like I pray thee, you know, I urge thee. Let a double portion of that spirit be upon me. Let, the, let a double portion of the spirit of God that is upon you be upon me. That's what he wants. I, I want a double portion. See? Verse 10, and he said, me and Elijah replied, thou, thou hast asked a what? A hard thing, man. Man, you asking a very difficult thing, man. A double portion of the spirit that God gave me? You want a double portion? He has lofty aspirations, man. <laughs> Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. See? So what was his response? Well, if, 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 if it happens, it's when, if, when I'm with you and you see me depart away. If you don't, then it's not going to happen. Verse 11. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of what? Fire. So this is actually a chariot of fire. Okay. Yeah, so that's a UFO. UFO. It's a chariot. It's a fiery chariot. See. A fiery chariot. And then when you read in Ecclesiastes 48, it mentions fiery horses 
<laughs> this is bad, bro. This is that isn't good. So it says, um, and it came to pass as they still went on and talked. That behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. Oh, it did say in the next part. I'm sorry. And horses of fire. Sorry about that. It mentions in Ecclesiastes 48. I should have kept reading. And horses of fire. And parted them both what? Asunder. Well, according to what Elijah spoke, what should be going down now? A double portion. And the spirit of God that was upon Elijah was going to be upon Elisha. Because it say, and parted them both asunder. So the fiery, the, the fire, the horses of fire and the, and the chariot of fire took Elijah up. And now Elijah and Elisha are separated now. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into what? Heaven. So what's the whirlwind? The whirlwind is the, 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 the fiery chariots and the fiery horses. It was like a, a, a fire whirlwind and, and, and received him up. Verse 12. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel the, and the horsemen thereof. Horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in what too? So you're like, because Elijah just departed from him. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. See, so that when Elijah was called him into heaven, that mantle didn't come with him. So the mantle remained on the earth, right? Near the Jordan, right there at the Jordan. So it says, verse 13, And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. What do you think he's going to try to do? Why he's standing by the bank of the Jordan right there? Because what did Elijah just do? Smoked the, water. Smoked the waters and the, the river was parted, right? Sunder and they walked on dry land, right? So, so it says, And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. See? So it's coming to pass. Now who's going before God in the spirit and power of Elisha? Elisha. Any reincarnation happen? Elijah came back three generations, four generations later. Nope. What the Lord did with Elijah and Elisha, the Lord was going to do with John the Baptist. That's the context of Luke 1. Not reincarnation. The spirit that the Most High put upon Elijah, he put upon Elisha, and he was going to do it later on in the history of the world, upon John. It's that simple. See? But when it's that simple, man can't promote and glorify himself. And have people in awe and worship of, that, of him. So what do they got to do? Well, I got to take the scripture out of context. So I, I can promote myself and my movement as the prophets of the past. We're back again. And that's what you've got in these Israelite doctrines. The thing is, people can't discern it as such. They can't read between the lines. They can't read. They can't see behind the witchcraft. And the word semantics and wordplay of scriptures. And... They let the CGI effects and the cameras and the camera settings and lighting and the music, right? The theatrics, they get caught up in that. It's all emotions. It's all a satanic spirit that's got our people bewitched. But a man in the apostle doctrine that feared God, you can see, nah, that's, the Lord ain't taught that. Apostles never taught reincarnation. So it says, verse 12, And Elisha saw it, and he cried, uh, I'm sorry, 
Uh, verse 14, and he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, verse 14, and smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of, it, of Elijah? And when he had smitten the waters, and when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Now let's read verse 15. Second Kings 2, 15. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, so who are they seeing now? Elisha. They said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. That's the same context of Luke 1. And he shall go before him, meaning the angel is telling Zechariah, your son John is going to go before God in the spirit and power of Elijah. Meaning the spirit of God that was upon Elijah, the Most High is going to put that spirit on your son. And they would have very similar ministries in turning and converting sinners onto God. Read it from the top again, 2 Kings 2.15. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view of Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before what? him so they, they were given reference you know like that was out of respect for the most high raising up this man because they knew that that spirit of Elijah that doth rest on Elisha was truly the spirit of God now let's get that point right let's go to let's go to Numbers 11 Let's go to book of Numbers chapter 11 and read where the Most High did something similar to what he did with Elijah and Elisha with Moses, right, and the 70 elders during the time of Moses. So let's go to Numbers 11. Numbers 11 and 16. So Numbers eleven sixteen, And the Lord said unto Moses, and so now we're reading about the time of who? Moses. Israel's in the wilderness. Already out of Egypt, have not entered into the promised land yet. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel. Okay, so very simple. The Lord told Moses, Gather seventy men of the elders of Israel. Whom thou knowest to be the what? Elders of the people. So did we have elders? Under Moses, yes. Do we have elders under Christ? In Christ, the priesthood of Christ, yes. And of the people. I'm going to say of elders of the people. And officers over them. See, so the officers will be similar to like deacons now. Because there is no officers now in the uh Ministry of Christ. Like a lot of Israel, I'm an officer of 50, 100,000 passing these tests. Yeah, I got 100. I tests of men. So it says, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation. So it said, we brought before the portable tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with thee. See? So they had to be viewed, just like those members of the 50 prophets, they viewed, they had to see that. There's certain things the Most High want Israel to see. So they see that this is of God. And I will come down and talk with thee there, see? And I will take the spirit which is upon thee and will put it upon who? Them. Where do you get reincarnation from that? You don't. So the spirit that the Most High gave Moses, he going to put some of that spirit on them, the 70 elders. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee. The only way that Moses could bear the burdens of Israel was through the Holy Spirit, 
So they needed the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. So it show, that's showing you that the Spirit of God was really the Spirit of who? Mo, uh, Mo Spirit, the Spirit of Moses talking about the Spirit of God. That thou bear it not thyself, what? What did it say? Alone. Alone, right? Could Moses bear the whole burdens of the whole nation of Israel by himself? Imagine a whole nation of people, right, Phil? And one guy got to bear the burdens of the whole nation. Is he going to get any sleep, brother? <laughs> right? Now that they're on the phone, oh, man, I'll get back to the brother. Back. Moses! <laughs> Christ said, the foxes have holes, the birds have nests, the son of man have nowhere to lay his head. You want to follow me? <laughs> I'll follow thee wherever you go, Lord. Lord, like, what? All right. Foxes, at the end of the day, they have holes. You know, the birds, they have nests, right? No, I think foxes are nocturnal, but y'all know the point. I don't know. Are they? I'm not sure. Anyway, foxes have holes, and the birds have nests. The son of man have nowhere to lay his head. See? Because it's a burden. It's it's the, the the people would come to Christ. Sometimes the whole day he's just healing people. People going through struggles in their life and they need to be healed. The Lord dealt with them all. You have, we have to think about that. Like what that entails. Because he knew exactly their struggles, what they went through in life, how hard they struggled. So their burdens became his. And he needed the most high to get through those times like that. So, verse, um, so now from that verse, go to verse 24. Brother, do you, um, sorry. To yes, sir. Uh, do you feel 1 Samuel 10 and 6 is the same thing? Just in a way more dark way. Um, 1 Samuel 10 and 6? Okay, hold that. Let's get, well, just hold that thought. Let, let me just finish here. And we, mm -hmm. we can get that. Remind me to go there, brother. So let's read verse 24. And Moses went out and told the people the words of who? The Lord. They mm -hmm. gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. So now we're at Numbers eleven twenty-five, right? And the Lord came down in a cloud. And understand, a lot of these times when we talk the Lord, it ain't just the Most High, it's the Spirit, it's the Most High and Christ. Okay? And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him. So the Lord came down in a cloud and spake to Moses and took the Spirit that was upon him and gave it to the 70 elders. Most I could do that. He could take the spirit of any prophet of the past and put it on another man. Even later on in the history of the world. He did it right there among living in, 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 in Moses' time. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not what? Cease. So once the Most High took the spirit that was upon Moses and put upon the 70 elders. Now they prophesying. They speaking the word of God. They're praising God. Right? That's cold. Now all Israel seeing that. Like, okay. Most I ain't just dealing with. The most I ain't just dealing with Moses. He's dealing with these men too. See? Now check this out. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad and the name of the other was Medad. The spirit rested on them. And they were of them that were written. But went not out onto the tabernacle. And they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. Forbid them. Forbid them. Remember when the disciples told, said that to Christ? Hey, there's people prophesying in your name. 
And the Lord said, what? We should, should we forbid them from teaching? Because they're not part of our circle here, right? And the Lord said, forbid them not. You don't stop them from preaching in my name. So that show you that man can't look. We the only ones teaching the truth. Like, even like, okay. In the city of Phoenix, how do we, we the only ones? How, how do we know that? Lord could have somebody fellowshipping out. We don't know. Eventually, we all going to come together. But that killed that doctrine where you got to join, like, you got you to join our camp and you're not in the truth. The spirit of truth is in our camp. No, the spirit of idolatrous worship of corrupt men is in your camp. So I ain't afraid to say it. That's the, that's the scriptures, devil doctrines. We should not be afraid. That's a, that's a devil doctrine. That's a doctrine inspired of the devil to say that the only way to learn the truth, you got to join a, a certain Israelite camp. So you got Israelites, so-called elders, that teach this directly, some of them indirectly. It's the same shenanigans. So you had two men that was in the camp prophesying, and then Joshua said, hey, look, forbid them, forbid them. That's in, um, go to, in the, in the Gospels, uh, Luke 9. Go to Luke 9. God's truth unfolding is bigger than what man sees through his narrow vision. Mosai sees and knows the whole picture. Man knoweth and prophesieth in part. So, um... Yeah, Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. And 49. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. They spoke in your name. Just like we cast out devils in your name. Meaning under your power and authority. And we forbade them. Because he followed, followeth not with us. This cut a lot of doctrines, a lot of these Israelite camps. A lot of them. That's why it's being said. If you're not part of our camp, you're not in the truth, meaning you're not in Christ. Then you got other groups talking about if you're not part of our group and you leave it, you're taking five steps. I forgot how many steps it was. Five, seven. <laughs> you're taking five steps back, seven steps back. So what are you saying then? You ain't saying no different than the guy that says you're not in our camp, you're not in the truth. And then you got Israelites. All praises. Hallelujah. <laughs> beware of false Christ that come in my name falsely. See, in other words, beware of those that that claim falsely power and authority that has only been given to me and put it upon themselves. <laughs> That'd be People looking for the Antichrist. Wait, oh, it's the Pope. Oh, he's coming out of Israel. The, the Antichrist is right there with friends blue board in front of your face, lying to you, taking scriptures out of context. We're looking for the Pope. Oh, that's him. It's this Pope. <laughs> he down with it too. Antichrist come in all colors and nationalities, including Israelites. The synagogue of Satan, Israelites. You have your father, the devil. Those were Israelites. The children of hell. Those were Israelites. Vipers and serpents. Those were Israelites. But the Israelite indeed, in whom is no God, Nathaniel. Okay. Forbid them. We forbade them. So they, they absorbed authority. They had no business of serpent, right? 
they went too far. They got a little too what? Zealous. And thought of themselves more highly than they ought to. Mm -hmm. That could happen to any of us. I'm going to read it again. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, meaning we stopped him, because he followed not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, don't stop him. <laughs> yeah, they probably had to go back, I would think, right? <laughs> we got to find this guy. <laughs> for he that is not against us is what? For us. So how can we discern if they're against us or for they? What, look, if he casting out devils, in the, then he for us. Christ said, you shall know every tree by its fruits. And even then, all right, you still don't stop a man. Who are we going to stop? Are you going to stop these false prophets? Did the Lord stop Judas? He said, do what thou doest quickly. He didn't say, stop, all right. Had enough of you. I don't want you to do what you're doing. He said, do what thou doest quickly. That's what he told Judas. What is he talking about? Go to the chief priest, elders, get your 30 shekels, right? And do what you got to do. Betray me. And he knew he was going to do it with a kiss. So who are we to stop? We can't stop. Oh, we could. Now, the, the Lord, he told him, hey, look, the one that dipped with me, he's going to betray. He, he, he gave all men plenty of time to repent. All them sermons the Lord was given. Didn't, didn't tell us Judas was a thief. The Lord, the Lord ain't told about us and not steal, and Judas wasn't there. See, but he let scriptures tell us he let Satan fill his heart. So that was it on that. And then, and then the next one, read the next one, verse 51. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go where? Because where was Christ to become the Lamb of God? At Jerusalem. So what feast is at hand? The Passover. By Christ being crucified, he would be risen from the dead three days, three nights after his burial to what? Ascend to the Father, right? To be received up into heaven, right? So they knew that his face was set to go to Jerusalem, the people in Samaria. And he, uh, well, it didn't say that part yet. So verse 52. And sent messengers before his face. So the Lord sent messengers before, before him. And they went and entered into the village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. So they were like, hey, look, the Lord, the Christ of Israel is coming. Be prepared for him, you know. And they did not receive him. So the Samaritans didn't receive Christ. These are different group than the ones that we read about the woman of Samaria. Remember where the Lord went for two days to her village and they received him. This group did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to where? Because you had the Samaritans up there in Samaria and the Israelites of Jerusalem. There was a big beef between both groups. Samaritans didn't go to Jerusalem to keep the feast. The Israelites in Jerusalem, Judea, the serve, they despised the Israelites, Samaria, because of that. And the, all, them seeds were sown a long time ago with Jeroboam. After Solomon's death, Jeroboam set up the places of worship in Samaria and idolatry up there. Okay. So there was a big beef and rift between both groups. And then you had some of the Samaritans that, hey, they were like, hey, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they worshiped him. But y'all say Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Lord, like, look, it's neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem where you're going to learn to worship God. God is the spirit. And they that worship must worship in the spirit and truth. And the Father seeketh such to worship him. Verse 
verse 54. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they saw that the Samaritans rejected Christ because they knew that he was going to go to Jerusalem. They said, Lord, would thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did? <laughs> See, there was a time when Elijah called fire from heaven. <coughs> And he, but he turned and re rebuked them. So Elijah called down fire from heaven to consume men on earth. We'll get to that. But he turned and rebuked them and said, what does rebuke mean? To correct. You know not what man of spirit ye are of. Meaning they think they have a zeal for Elijah because when Elijah called fire from heaven, that was the will of God. So they threw Elijah called fire from heaven to consume people. Let's do it with these guys. because they. So they had a zeal for Christ, but not according to what? Knowledge. They actually were given place to the devil by doing, by saying this. So to show you we can have good intentions, right? But we're actually going against the will of God. Because ultimately, what is Christ saying? For, for the Son of Man is not to come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. I didn't come to destroy people's lives. I came to save people. So just because they rejected them right then and there, you don't just call fire from heaven and destroy them. <laughs> John and James, man, that, that's out of order, man. Well, Elijah did that. Well, Elijah was in this. You're out of the spirit. So that's, that shows we can deceive ourselves. And yeah, just like this prophet, that prophet, that's all. No, we're not in that spirit. Because we can't see they going on what emotions. Elijah was not going on emotions. Or whatever passions he was, the, the zeal he had had to be in accordance to the will of God. This is not according to the will of God. So that sh shows that these doctors in Israel, yeah, you the two thirds, you're going to be missing food, you're going to be destroyed. Most are going to destroy you for rejecting the truth. They're not rejecting the truth, they're rejecting devil doctrines. What these guys are teaching is not the truth. So when people reject it, you're going to curse them out. I remember back at the old school, 125th Street. We used to throw up curses on Israel. And women. Actually praying. The most I destroy Israel that reject the word. Praying. What scripture is that, man? I said, pray for your enemies. <clears throat> pray for them which despitefully use you. And say all men of evil against you falsely for my sake. See? But we have to understand the spirit that was in that school on 125th Street, ISUPK. The spirit of idolatrous worship of corrupt men. And from engraven images of Christ. There used to be an image of Christ in the back. Of a man, dark man with, with woolly hair in the back. I remember when I was going in there, I would look at it. I, would, I didn't want to look at it. So it's that same spirit. Like, it was weird. Like, I would look at it. I'm like, man, like, did somebody see what Christ looked like? Like, to draw it like that. Oh, it's a revelation. Of, like, what, what does the Messiah tell us when we make idols? It's the beginning and end of all evil. And from it comes murder, adultery, fornication, lying, changing of kind, prostitution, whoremongering, sisters being whores. That spirit was rampant. The place where the truth started, 1969, 125th Street, by 1995, fell apart because every kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. And then it split into every which way. And each camp, including the one I was a part of, what was it called? Twelve tribes? I forget. The House of David. We changed the name of the camp, but we didn't put off the leaven. Right? So we're not ISUPK no more. We HOD, House of David, right? And then this group was the IS this, and then from there it just splintered all over the place. Different than Christ said, new wine. 
New bottles. New wineskin bottles. You can, we can change the name of our camp, change the color of the garments, change the, who's running the camp. But that leaven, you don't put off the leaven, you're bound to make the same mistakes, not some mistakes, the same sins over and over again. So yeah, cursing the people on the Day of Atonement. <laughs> Absurd. What are going to say, brother? Is the Elijah that you mentioned that spoke to Elias, is that Elijah of Second uh, Kings? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Eli uh, let me... What, Second what? Kings has Elijah that was taken up from the whirlwind. But you're mentioning Elias as Elijah. Is that... Did he change his name? Uh... Oh, you you talking about it says E L I J A H in the Old Testament and E L I A S here? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Well, in Second Kings it says Elijah. It's spelled Elijah. Yeah, it's just the way it was translated. Oh, okay. Yeah, like when you read, like for example, Paul quoted Hosea, and when you read Hosea in the Old Testament, it'll say H O S E A, mm -hmm. but when you read it in Romans nine, it's O S E E. It's the same prophet. It's just the way it was translated. So this Elijah is the same Elijah? The same Elijah that we read about, yes, sir. Yeah. So we'll, eventually we'll get to that where he actually called fire from heaven. Mm -hmm. But when he did it, that was in, in according to the will of God. These John and James were not acting in the will of God. They were desiring the things that were of men. They, that's why I say, you know not what man spirit ye are of. Because I come to destroy. I mean, I come to save men's lives, not to destroy. You You want to destroy men's lives. That's not what my ministry is about. I'm about saving people. And just because people reject me now doesn't mean that they can't repent later. Because remember, the proof is the same ones that crucified, were partakers in crucifying Christ on the day that he died, less than two months later were able to repent from that. Remember, said so they were pricked in their heart. Why? They were the ones that killed Christ. And they, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said, God, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for remission of sins, that you may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You was going to say something else, brother? No. No, okay, yeah. So that's the same, yeah, it's just the way it's just, it's just worded, like, in the translation. I was going to just, like, just so... Understand when we read in uh, uh, 53 uh, verses, it says, it did not, they did not receive him. So Christ was, he knew they was not going to be received everywhere he was going to go, right? Mm -hmm. So that was, he was not, and when the brothers were saying uh, about the command fire to come down to, from heaven, Christ was not about, he, he knew, so that means everywhere he is not being received, are we going to be calling fire to the people? Right. Exactly. It's gonna be fire all over the place. Yeah. You know, fire. fire. That's fire what, that's what it's, yeah, that's what he says for the Son of Man is not to come to yeah. destroy men's life. Now imagine they do that. They fire Who's everybody. next? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Lord, that's a that's a, that was eleven right there. They had to be well, Lord had to bring them down to earth. Like, what's wrong with y'all, man? But well, you don't know what matter of spirit you are of. You mean you got the devil in you, man. That's not the spirit of God. That's the spirit of error. So well, yes. That's right, right there and there, he got, they got corrected. And yeah, say so he read it, yeah. they understood, they see. Oh, yeah, that was a lesson they had yeah. to learn. They had to learn that. I don't see. Yeah, they had to learn. That's a lesson they had to learn. You don't be cursing out people. <laughs> I remember the street teachers, we were in the street teachers. I remember one, it was one camp on uh, 40... Second Street, now for Forty Fourth Street and Broadway, and at the end of the camp, we were throwing curses on Israel, Hebrew and then so-called Hebrew and then English. And Israel, what happened was Israel, they not that school ain't around no more. You ISUPK because the one out now that's just a retread, you know. Then the groups that split it off, they. Many of them, I can't say all of them, I don't know, but many of them you can see because they're still out today. They carried on that leaven where the, you can tell the way they teach it people, you know. So, you know, cursing people out, 
Now, is you know, if they're teaching devil doctrines, call them on it. That's a devil doctrine. <laughs> that's you know, that's one thing. But when you cursing people, the most I destroy them. Come on, man. That's so. These these are things. So so these things carried on, and that le a little leaven leaven if what a whole it don't take just a little leaven in that dough and rises. So the, then it said, and then it said in uh, Luke nine, and um, fifty six. It says, "For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them." And they went to another village. And they went to another village, like he told his disciples. He's when he sent them out two by two. He said, and, and then he sent out the seventy. He said, "Look, the, the cities that receive you." You know, then all praises, right? They don't receive you, shake off the dust of your feet and move to the next. But their judgment is coming. But don't take it personal. <laughs> and don't even take it personal for me, which is a mistake that we can make. We can take things personal for Christ. We could take things personal for somebody else. You can't have a beef for Christ that he has no beef with Israel with. But we, we making the beef for the Lord. That's your beef, not mine. That's your problem. I don't have a problem with that. Because what? I come to destroy, or save men's life, not to destroy him. I'm, yeah. All men will have time. Not all men receive the truth the first time they hear the truth. The Lord had to convince Moses. <laughs> he, he, he had to convince Jeremiah. To serve him. Okay. That's not that's not like tempting. No, it's just they I, they were more like me. I, do your will? Oh, I don't know. You know, so it wasn't. I mean, it would have been tempting if they would have continued. If they had to realize that the most. Look, I chose you before you were born. <laughs> yeah, so it was more like if they weren't resisting them like the Samaritans were resist, resisting Christ, but it was more like you know, Moses. Like, yeah. I, I can't speak the language well, this, this, that. Lord, like, look, who made man's mouth? <laughs> Jeremiah said, I'm, I'm just a babe. Like, yeah. the, when, men, when the Lord called the men to truly do his work, they're not like Israel that want to do the work and don't understand what it entails. It's a burden. Even Moses couldn't carry himself. So the Lord had to put the spirit of on Moses, put upon 70 elders. They had to bear the burden with them. See, Israel don't look at the burden part. They look at, yeah, I can get me a high rank. And then I, I can get on TV and the videos and I can do this and that. And everybody will know that I'm a captain of 50. It's all vain glory, man. So let's go back to this point in Numbers 11. Remember that the two men prophesied in the camp? Joshua, I forbid them. Forbid them. Forbid them. Stop them, Lord. Moses. So I'll read the 28 verse. Numbers 11, 28 again. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses... And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. Stop them. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? You got to be for me? You, you got to be for him for me? Are you envying him for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets. I wish all God's people were prophets. I wish everybody could, knew the Lord and was about the Lord. And that the Lord would put, what did it say? His spirit upon them. So whose spirit was really the spirit of Moses? The spirit of God. He wished that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Envious thou? What did he say? Envious thou for my sake? You think, you envying, you, 
you envying what he's doing for my sake? I, you think I'm jealous? <laughs> you think I'm he taking something from me? Like, shoot. I wish all of God's people were prophets. And that the Spirit of God would rest upon all of them. Because they knew that then what? We would all be right, you know, and then they, we wouldn't have to hear controversies and this brother tried and defended this brother and this brother stole from this man and this brother and now Moses got to hear his Moses uh, what's the issue now now he got to hear both sides the bickering back and forth and then Holy Spirit discern give him the sermon to help the matter and <laughs> it, it, that show you that what Moses knew what it what it what what it what it took to be a leader in Israel. Moses understood it perfectly. So when he seen two when he hearing about two men prophesying in the Lord's name, and Joshua talking about forbid them, like you envying for my sake? Man, I wish all of God's people were prophets. <laughs> but once again, what what the Lord God will put his spirit upon them. So when we read earlier in verse 25, where it said, And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake on him and took the spirit that was upon him and gave it to the 70 elders. What does that truly mean? Let's go back to the question I asked earlier. What did it mean by the Most High will, that John the Baptist would come in the spirit and power of Elijah? Meaning the spirit of God that was upon Elijah, that he gave Elijah, and the power that he gave him to do that work, now he would what? Put that same spirit of God upon John. That's what that means. See, and when we know these scriptures like that, that's how nah, people come with that doctrine. You might come across. They teach out here. They might say, hey, brother, you got the fringe of blue water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's commandments. All right, brother, you know, um, so you know you're Israelite? Yeah, yeah, of course, man. Oh, cool. Yeah, we, we got a church. You can come in. Uh, yeah, but one of the things y'all teach is reincarnation. That's a false doctrine. What you mean is false? All right, you got some time, brother? Yeah, that's all right. Boom, let's go. See? <laughs> Love thy neighbors thyself, right? Y'all showing them scriptures. Don't fear the face of man. The judgment is God's. Yeah, I've been in this too 30 years, brother. Yeah, okay. So I say we got to humble ourselves as a child. Let's go. <laughs> Verse 30, Numbers eleven thirty, And Moses got him into the camp, he and the elders of Israel. See, all one. Moses ain't got a problem with all these men having the spirit of God because that's going to help him. That's not a debt. That's why he's like, you envious? You, you envious for my sake? Shoot. I wish all the most house people were prophets. <laughs> right? We're not done. Let's go to Numbers 27. Let's read Numbers chapter 27 and verse 15. This is a good one here. And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of what? The spirits of all flesh, set a man over the what? congregation God the Lord is the God of what the spirits of all flesh so the spirit that Elijah had a double portion of the spirit of Elijah came upon Elisha what does that mean the spirit that God put upon Elijah God gave him a double portion of that spirit. He gave Elijah, which is the spirit of God to begin with, on Elisha. 
And he what prophesied. The testimony of the word of God. Christ is the spirit of prophecy. That's Numbers 27. What verse, uh, verse 16. I'll read it again. Numbers 27, 15. <clears throat> and Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, so now Moses praying to the Father, let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh. So the spirit that Elijah, or any, all of it, we all got spirits. Who gave us that spirit? The Most High. The spirit that Moses had. God, the Most High, is the God of the spirits of all flesh. So Elisha was his own man, just like Elijah was his own man. But the spirit that was upon Elijah, the spirit of God, came upon Elisha. Just like the spirit of God that was upon Elijah came upon uh, John the Baptist. And that's why there's many similarities in the ministry of both. And even the mannerism, too. Like fiery prophets. Elijah was known as a hairy man, meaning he wore a hairy garment. False prophets would wear hairy garments to deceive. John Baptist wore a, a garment with shorn camel's hair. They were both... A burning light. So it says, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the what? Congregation, because he must decrease, right? And now another must what? Increase. Which may go out before them, and which may go in before them to lead Israel out and to lead Israel back. Like a shepherd, right? A leader of men which may lead them out and which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not as what? Sheep which have no shepherd. During the time of Christ, when the Lord looked upon the multitudes of Israel, Israel he was moved with compassion upon them because what? They were fainted as what, Lewin? Sheep having what? No shepherd. no shepherd. And what did he say? Pray the Lord of the harvest. You got to pray the Lord raise up teachers. See? And guess what? We're praying for the Lord to raise us up to do the work of the Lord. Who's going to do it? How shall they hear except they be sent a what? A preacher. So we're just going to sit here and wait for the Lord to. <laughs> they out there. Everything's according to the measure and gift of Christ, of course. That everybody has their part in the ministry. Even Priscilla, Aquila, and Priscilla. The script when you another book of Acts, they were husband and they were married. And they were together, they were what? In the ministry of the Lord, doing the work. They were doing the work. They saw the brother Paulo's teaching like, man, this guy is powerful in them scriptures. He like one thing. That's teaching about the Lord. After that, man, man was like unstoppable. <laughs> See? So Let's read on. Oh, so it's very important that Israel always have what? Shepherds, right? Leaders. Not that promote worldliness. And this is okay and that's okay. Oh, that's not bad. And No. Sin is sin. You don't want to teach doctrines that promote worldliness disguised as what? The apostles' doctrine. All right? Verse 18 now. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee who? Joshua, the son of Nun. So who, 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 Moses going to leave it in the Most High's hands, who he sees fit to be the shepherd over Israel, because Moses, his ministry going to come to an end. In whom is the what? Spirit. What spirit? The spirit of what? God, the Most High. Not the spirit where he, Whatever man sees in man, the spirit of the most high. And lay thy what? 
hands upon them. That's one of the principles of the doctrine of Christ, praying over brothers. The most out of bless them. And sent him, meaning Joshua, before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him charge in what? See, so the people had to know. So the people can see. Wow, Eleazar, the high priest, he's, you know, they praying over Joshua. So all Israel know Joshua going to be the leader of Israel. Not Caleb, not this guy, not that guy, not this brother, not that brother, not me. <laughs> no, not you. Joshua. And give him charge in their sight. And thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him. So the honor that Moses had, the spirit of God that Moses had, now would be upon Joshua. That all the congregation of the children of Israel may be what? Obedient to me. So when Moses gave the orders and instruction, they didn't know that it's coming from me. Just like when you gave them orders and instructions, they had to understand it came from me. They're going to see that now I'm going to work through who? Joshua. Verse 21. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest who shall ask counsel for him. So when it came to counsel, Joshua had to deal with who? The priest, Eleazar, right? Who shall counsel for him after the judgment of Urim before the Lord. So on, Aaron, on Aaron's breastplate and then Eleazar, his son, there was a, a like a stone that that lit up and kind of revealed like the uh, the will of the Lord. See, so it said at his word though. See, it was at the word of Eliezer shall they go out, and in his word they shall come in. So when it's time to go out and come in, Joshua had a count. He had a counsel. You know what the, the whole point is: a multitude of what counselors is safety, right? He and all the children of Israel with him, even all the congregation. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him, and he took Joshua and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation. And what? He laid his hands upon him and gave him a charge, a commandment, as the Lord commanded by the hand of who? Moses. So Eleazar laid his hands upon Joshua and gave him a charge as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. You see how the instruction order? Boom, Moses, Eliezer, Joshua, sight of the people. Because Moses' desire was that Israel be not a sheep that have no what? Shepherds, no leaders, exactly. So it's important to have true leadership in Israel. So, such as hate covetousness. Okay, they fear God. Let's go to Numbers, Deuteronomy 34 now. So we'll end it in this one here, and then we'll go back to these scriptures, Lord willing. Numbers chapter 34. I mean, I'm sorry, not sorry. Deuteronomy chapter 34. Deuteronomy chapter 34. Verse 7. So let's read this. And Moses was 120 years old when he what? Died. His eye was not what? Dim. So he didn't need glasses. <laughs> Deuteronomy 34 and 7. So how old did Moses get to live? 120. But when he died, he did not die. He wasn't like losing his sight. His eye was not dim. Nor his natural what? Force abated. He still felt like he was in his prime physically. <laughs> his 
I'm in my prime. Moses, you all right? I'm in my prime. <laughs> yeah, hey, you all right? Hey, yeah, I got that for you. I could lift this up like I was when I was 20 years old, brother. <laughs> the man had strength, bro. He had 120. Man, the Lord blessed that man. You know, 120, you got strength. Your eyes are not dim. Shoot, we make it 120. Man, you know, we hope to be half that, a quarter that. We young already. Scripture glass. Oh man, get my shoulder. So let's read on. So it says, And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. So for 30 days, Israel, man, we mourn for the loss of Moses, the death of Moses. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands on him, upon him. See, the spirit of God was upon the spirit that was on Moses, the spirit of God now is on Joshua. So all these great men and women of the scripture that we read about, that, that was all the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. All praise and honor go to who? The Father of Christ. No man can say, I did this. We say that, we dead meat. We dead. We tempting God. What did Peter say when that, they healed that man? That was it, 40 years, the brother was crippled? He said, why you look upon us as through our own holiness or power this man stand here before you all. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom y'all crucified, by his name, does this man stand here before you all. See? So Peter, man, they, they did great works. They never promoted themselves. They never promoted themselves for any of the works that they did because they understood that it was the Lord working through them. Christ told I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. So they understood it was the Father and Christ working through them. And they always, they always remain in that spirit. That's what made these men great in the scriptures. They never made the truth about themselves. Where we can, we have, we have a tendency, like, we'll get offended for the Most High. We'll start to make moves to stop this and stop that. What are we stopping, man? What are we doing? This ain't our pro. When we start to make this truth, the most highest truth, our program, the most high, he will humble. Most high, humble thyself before thou be sick. See? So we, we got to be humble. And this ain't our truth. You can't take it personal for the most high. You, we got to stop that. Make, uh, we got to stay in our lane. So let's read on. So it says, And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. In all the signs and wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh, to all his servants and to all his land, and in all that mighty hand, and in all thy great terror which Moses showed in the sight of what? All Israel. See, as great as Moses was, whose spirit did he do that by? By the spirit of the Most High Christ. Just like the apostles of the Lord would do. The works that Jesus Christ did and greater works than what he did. Because I go unto my Father in heaven and I will return unto you in the form of the comforter. You're going to do the works that I do and greater works. Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. He didn't say nothing after that. He didn't say in you and you and you and you and you and you. See? This is all about the Most High in Christ. It's their truth. Father's truth. Christ did the will of the Father. So all praise to the Most High in Christ. We'll get back to this lesson. See, but 
We see how these scriptures are important to an understanding so we can understand the context of Luke where it says how John would go in the spirit and power of Elijah, all these scriptures. Now we, we aren't. See? So all praises to the Most High Christ. So let's do the prayers. Thou hast dwelt well with thy servant, O Lord. This is Psalm 119.65. Thou hast dwelt well with thy servant, O Lord, according to thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge. For I have believed in thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now have I kept thy word. Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. All praises to the Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless Israel as we seek your mercy, compassion, forbearance, and your healing, Lord. Show us the error of our ways that we may humble ourselves and repent. Let this blessing be upon the 12 tribes scattered throughout the whole world. Help us endure temptations and trials and endure in the, in, in the keeping of your word and commandments. Thank you, Father in Christ. Amen. So we'll do the communion, we'll do the Lord's Prayer. I mean, uh, um, let's read the scripture. So Matthew 26, 26. So it says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave, gave it to them, saying, Drink you all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So the Lord gave the bread and wine for the disciples to eat and drink to memorialize his death till his second coming. So we want to do this um, in a way where we're always continually repenting and humbling ourselves and seeking the most high in Christ to better ourselves in this walk. In other words, eat and drink worthily. Because if we eat and drink unwor unworthily and continue in sin and tempting God, then we're eating and drinking damnation to ourselves. Paul addressed this to the church of Corinth and said, For this cause there are many weak and sickly among you, and many sleep, meaning many die. So this is something that's um, very serious in the eyes of the Lord when he gave it to disciples, because on this day he was going to be killed. So we're memorializing his death till he come in the way that we live. So, 
The Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, bless our bread and wine, which represents the body and blood of the Lord. This we do in remembrance of you until you come. Thank you, Father, in Christ. Amen. 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 Peace and blessings, everyone. The Most High in Christ bless your homes. Thank you for fellowshipping with us on this feast day. I hope that uh, I see the thing kept saying slow connection. Was everybody able to hear the uh, audio on the video? Did the lesson come out all right? I hope so. I kept seeing um, that it was a slow connection. So I don't know if somebody could uh, let me know if uh, the audio went through. The video is okay. Better peace and blessings to everyone on the, uh, Facebook Live. Peace and blessings to your homes. Thank you for fellowship with us, being with us in the spirit. May the Lord bless you in your homes. With, uh, peace of mind, inner joy, inner peace, good health, and the spirit to continue to endure faithfully in this walk. All right, brother. Most well, high Christ bless you, brother. It was cool on your end. All praises, brother. Peace and bless to your home, brother. Yeah, I keep saying slow connection, so usually that means it. But that's all we had, though. All right, everyone. Peace and bless to your homes. Stay strong, keep enduring, pray for one another. Peace and blessings, everyone. Most High Christ bless you all.